freaking first cut. Golly! What's going on, YouTube? Round one at the Wells Fargo Championship in the books. We're here to break it all down and look at the odds board. Hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed, and we'll jump into it right now. Welcome to the First Cup Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, joined by that man right there, Kyle Porter KP. What up? A lot of, a lot of talking to Rick Gaiman today. It's been great. It's been a great day. Just a, just a great day. I could do this every day times five. We should just do it, open, open, open a stream when we log on in the morning and just <laughs> close it when we sign off. I'd have to, I would have to hit, uh, hit the mute button for when I'm hollering at my kids. But other than that, I think we, I think we'd be good to go. Friend of the pod, Jason Day. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. 63, seven under par leads the Wells Fargo championship. KP, I don't have many adjectives for this. It was sublime. It was vintage. He gained across the board. He drove it well. He was hunting down flag sticks. He rolled the rock. It was awesome. Yeah, it was really good. You know, he's had a weird year because you remember when he led Tory late and you're like, yeah. oh, is Jason Day going to made an ace on what is that 14 or no, I guess he hold yeah. out on four. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was right there. I was like three feet away from him. And I was like, I, holy crap. Jason day is going to win this. I, that's what I thought. I thought he was going to win that tournament and then he didn't. And then he kind of, I mean, it's been a fair for him. It's been a, a below average year. He, he, um, but yeah, all that to say, like, it's great to see him playing well. Uh, he played great on Thursday. I didn't see a ton of his round. He played, did he play late in the day or did he play early? Jason Day, uh, he played in the afternoon. Okay. Yeah. Cause I watched mostly in the morning. So I didn't see a lot of his rounds. It seemed like the, the afternoon was playing a little bit easier because a lot of the, a lot of the better scores like him and Joel Damon, top two, seemed to be, or, or they were both in the afternoon. But yeah, I mean, Listen, like Jason Day was the best putter in the world for like three years, and he didn't even put it that great on Thursday. So I, I'm, I'm. It seems like a course that would fit him, where it's just kind of like soft and sloppy and long, and just a place where, um, he he could potentially thrive. Be great to see him win again. Talks about confidence in his post round interview. Talks about confidence with us when we had him on. Right, that that seems to be the through line for Jason day over the course of the last couple of years, he knows he's not that guy anymore. He knows he's not that number one player in the world, but he, I think and a lot of athletes do this. Kyle is like, you try to convince yourself of that. Like you try to convince yourself. You still have that in there. And it seems like that is the challenge for Jay day at the moment. Do you know when his last win was? I, I, I do because it's in the outline, but I would not have guessed that it was the 2018 Wells Fargo championship. <laughs> Really? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. Hold on. Well, so he, he, uh, because that's, he won Tory that year also. He beat right. Nick Watney and Aaron. I have no recollection of this tournament. I might have been off that week. Aaron Wise finished runner up. Yeah. And Bryson was fourth. Phil was fifth. Peter Uline was fifth. Those are like, if I, uh, I, I probably made a killing that week. Those are all my guys. <laughs> I probably made so much money that week. <laughs> uh, but to my, to my, uh, to my point from earlier, like, and, and this is a confidence thing. So since he finished T3 at farmers, T24 at pebble, miscut, miscut, he hasn't played that much. He didn't qualify for the masters. Um, so it's, it's gotta be weird. And, and you and I talked about this a little bit earlier today which i think does that come out next week uh it'll probably come out on uh sunday so a okay days. great um we talked about jordan spieth but for day it's got to be weird where it's like man i've been the best player in the world and then i'm missing three cuts in a row and i'm just i'm not in the masters this is a little bit of the fowler thing also right or fowler was like a top five top six guy and that it's almost harder to recover from that than to get to the top to begin with. And I think that's a little bit of what, what Jason Day is experiencing. Well, 763 has him out front uh, here at TPC Potomac. The chase pack is large, but Joel Damon, his closest chaser, one shot back, six under. Joel Damon went out in 29 KP, which is the harder side, the front, and made eight threes. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll work. 
Yeah, that's that's dirty. Eight threes and a and uh, well, let's see. No, I think he made. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Seven threes and two fours. And one of the fours was a birdie. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, that's that's disgusting. He gained six strokes on that side, right? Am I looking at that right? Uh, probably because I know that that side was playing over par and he shot a 29 on it so that would make sense that he gained. yeah he gained a little over six strokes and then he lost a little on the back so another guy that's just i mean a, a lot of these guys at the top we'll get to matt wolf in a minute but they're just fun to have in the mix right it's fun when jason day's playing well it's fun when joel damon's playing well it's fun when matthew wolf is playing well ricky fowler shot four under today rory was in it he shot three under so I, it, it's it's a fun board and uh Damon is yeah it'd be it'd be great to see him I, obviously he's won before but it'd be great to see him win kind of a bigger event like this at least in name not the best field but for him to get a win this week I think would be massive yeah the chase back is pretty cool I want to I want to get into that but I want to ask you something here KP have you found it harder than ever to find qualified people uh in your hiring process Oh, I can't find qualified people to uh, help me with the dishes at night. So I don't know if there's anybody there to to do that. But maybe you could post uh, evening dishwasher at the Porter household on LinkedIn jobs because they make it easier to find the people that you want to talk to faster and for free. You could post your job. What would the requirements for that be? Uh, maybe experience with a dish rag. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you have a specific type of uh, deter, not detergent? What's if they it? just, if they just read me data golf stats, I think I'd be good. Like you don't even need to do anything. Just, just entertain me with data golf. You, we could hire this. So we, we could hire <laughs> this right now. Uh, LinkedIn jobs. You can create a free job post in minutes. It reaches over 770 million people. It focuses on the candidates that are qualified for the job you're looking for. And it's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs, the number one job site in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So here's what you need to know. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash first. That's linkedin.com slash first to post your job for free terms and conditions do apply the chase pack it's crowded bunch of guys at five under one two three four of them bunch of guys at four under at this moment oh boy one two three four five six seven eight of them so they're piling up behind uh matt wolf goes out wolf this morning and shoots a 65 five under par yeah uh, Talk about guys that are dealing with, I don't want to say confidence issues, but like, yeah, try, trying to find their game again, right? Trying to find a little bit of, resur of a resurgence, trying to find a little bit of a vibe. Uh, highlighted this round by, by birdies on 13, 14, and 15. I don't think this is a course that I would have said is a Matthew Wolf course, but good to see him kind of out near the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, it's it's weird that he's still ranked 54 in the world, right? Because he, he just, I mean... He had that great fall where he he went uh yeah he went T17 second solo second T5 T11 and you're like okay we went through this this kind of valley he's he's going to he's going to have a resurgence at the beginning of 2022 but other than a top 10 at the Saudi he goes miscut 64th miscut T61 miscut T60 miscut I mean, he didn't even have a top 50 this year on the PGA Tour. Mm. Uh, he missed the cut at the Masters. That was his last tournament. So, you know, he I think he mentally is just um, searching a little bit. Did you see his comments after the round? I did not. He said uh, he said, I'm, I'm just I'm just here to have fun this week. He's like, I played at my home course. I think it was last week, maybe two weeks ago. I lost every ball I had and I had no expectations coming into this week. And I'm, I'm just trying to have fun, which is great. Like I'm all for that. I think that's easy to say on Thursday. If you just shot, shot 65, I think it's harder when you're in the mix on Saturday or Sunday, just to, just to try to have fun. Right. So I think he's searching for not, not like a swing thought, but like a tournament thought, like why, like, what am I doing out here? Why am I here? And it's just, it's been a hard adaptation from him going from college to the PGA tour. And I listen, like 
I hope he starts thriving again because like Jason Day, like um, the guys that we mentioned before, it's more fun when he's involved in these tournaments. Uh, this could be a big week for somebody. Day's near the top. Wolf near the top. R Ricky Fowler. Ricky Fowler. I'll just hit the drop right now. I don't even know if we still have it on the board. 66. Four under par for Ricky. Made an all-timer, an all-time bogey. KP, I think you hold out from 135 yards. That was the longest hole out for bogey in the shot link era. Cause think about that. You gotta, you gotta like lose one off the tee. You gotta still be far away hitting your fifth and you gotta dunk it. I guess you don't have to dunk it. You could roll it in, but you get the idea. You gotta hoop it. Yeah. He yeah, he did. And he's another, I mean, he's another guy where it felt like there were time at, at times last year where you're like, okay, this is, starting to turn around and he's just been bad this year like as bad as he's been in this uh kind of drought that he i mean is, is there anything that he's done this year that makes you feel like okay fowler is gonna start rolling again i mean he finished what uh third at the uh, cj cup or second that, that was the only yeah and i guess yeah that was this season that was what that was in like november uh he drove it unbelievable that week he like gained like five and a half strokes on the field he was he was driving it out past rory uh that was the only thing i've seen in like 12 months that i got excited about and it was just that one week yeah and it, it just didn't stick and i think he's another guy like i think like day it's just there's almost a sense of um i don't know if shame is the right word but when you've been a top five guy and now you're ranked a hundred and 50th in the world and and you're back out there with everybody there's got to be a sense of like i don't deserve to be out here or i i'm not playing well enough to be like don't you feel like there has to be almost this like guiltiness for like i i'm just not as good as the rest of these guys right now i would feel i would feel that way which is uh the only reason i'm not a top tier professional athlete i'm for sure, sure. For sure everything else i'm sure is in line but i would feel that way especially around like major championship season because like he has, he's not qualified for any of these things and yeah. i'd be like holy crap all these guys are going to x major championship next week and i'm not in or all these guys just came back from wherever and i didn't qualify like i was not good enough to play that that would uh i, I that would be gutting i, I would hate that it would be tough, and it would be tough when a lot of your friends are guys that are not only playing but contending and and winning them, you know. And I think that that's why, like, if Fowler ever does win again, I think it'll be really cool. Uh, obviously for him, but I think it'll be. I mean, there's a little bit of the Spieth story in there. He's obviously not as good as Spieth, or wasn't, and isn't right now. But I, I think it would be. It would be sweet to see him get a victory. Obviously, it's not at uh, Quail Hollow, but to see him 10 years after he got his first uh, PGA Tour win to to do it again at this event 10 years later. If Ricky wins, the entire field should have to line up by scoring and give him a high five and a hand. <laughs> doing that for yeah, That would be great. He'd be in the PGA. I, I, well, is he in the PGA? He might be in that field. I looked this up a couple uh, like last week. I don't remember. Because don't he finished... Uh, he finished T8 last year, well, and that might have that might have gotten him in. I don't know. Uh, let's show the odds board. Jason Day, the favorite, six to one. Rory McIlroy, four shots back, eight to one. KP, Rory McIlroy was four under par by the time I woke up this morning. He went, yeah, he went birdie, bogey, birdie, 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 birdie. First uh, six holes of the day. Gave a couple back after that, but it was a 67, and you at least saw. I mean, he made the ugly double on four where he drove it into the water, but there was there was a lot of good Rory on Thursday. Uh, Ricky is in the field in Tulsa, which is great. Uh, yeah, I watched the I watched most of Rory's back nine, which was the front nine on the course, which is where he played worse uh, on Thursday anyway. And he was hit, he's hitting it really well. Like he's 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 hitting it great. And I think the stats kind of show that he gained, what is that, two and a half ball striking, which is is really good. And I think, you know, Justin Ray had a really interesting article uh, on Tuesday just showing how bad he's been from that, what is it, seven or uh, 50 to 125 range? Right. Is that the is that the measured number? Uh, 
Yeah. I, I think there's, it's 50. There's a couple, but yeah, 50 to 120. 50 to Yeah. And it just is so beneficial to him, I think, to have – how long is this course? What's it playing? Like 70, 74, 5? Oh, I don't even think it's that long, right? Because it's a par, it's a par, it's a par seventy. So it is currently playing seventy one sixty. Oh, uh, okay. So it's a little shorter than I imagined. Um, it seemed like, and I don't have uh, shot link in front of me. It seemed like he had a lot of like longer, not longer irons, but those like 180, 190 shots. And he was just he was he hits he's been hitting those so well, and he hit it great on Thursday. This actually. Uh, I thought Thursday was actually encouraging for his PGA championship chances. I, I, I don't know if he'll stay in this throughout the weekend. I imagine he will because he's the best player in the field. But uh, I was just all that to say, I was really encouraged by how he was hitting it. And it made me excited for, for two weeks at Southern Hills. Any uh, any number you like on this board? Aaron Rye playing well. He's twenty two to one. Uh, Matthew Wolf closer to the top of the leaderboard. He's twenty five to one. Matt Fitzpatrick two under twenty five to one. Sergio Garcia l- seemingly maybe just wants to make some cash and get out of town. He's twenty two to one. Anything uh, catching your interest here? Yeah, if Sergio can finally get a few breaks. Maybe maybe he'll uh, something will go his way. Uh, I mean, Wolf is. <laughs> he's so volatile right but i think that like that's i think it provides good value i don't know he might be too vol. he might be like he, he might be beyond volatile uh, i'll tell you what i i i'm a sucker for aaron rye right now really he's just it's just more of the same he's just been so good um, he generally hits the ball. Like he's very generally a very good ball striker. Let me just see what he did. Yeah. He did it again. He gained like three strokes in the ball striking categories. I, I, I don't know. Like as long, as long as Rory doesn't come chase everybody down. I mean, are you confident that day closes this Damon closes it McCarthy or no, like no. H- right, right. So like, why, why not Aaron Rye? I feel like home has been hitting it really well too. Let me look oh, at his numbers. Home has been awesome. He's been like the best ball striker in the field for the last 24 rounds. He's giving most of it back in the short game, but if he can just like, remember he was the only guy last year who, when he gains, I think it was like three or four strokes putting. He had a top 10, like he cashed every single one of those like pop putting weeks. He was yeah. the only guy who did it. So I do love the Homa upside. He's currently at, um, three under 67 and he's 25 to one yeah that's that's not bad yeah it's not bad at all he i mean he's having the best ball striking year of his of his career by far it's not close yeah it's not even close which is is kind of crazy and i and i think it's a little bit i always go back to this matt kuchar quote from like seven years ago about how like there's a 10-year learning curve on the tour not just the courses and like how to be a pro and all that, but like off the course and just like how to live life as a tour pro. And I think that when guys like Spieth and JT who are sort of home as peers break that mold, it makes it seem like he's behind the curve when the, I think the reality he's like on like the, the more natural kind of professional curve. So maybe it shouldn't be super surprising that he's having the best ball striking I think the last two years have been the two best years he's ever had ball striking. Uh, so yeah, I like him at, at 25 to one. I think he's, I think he, him and Wolf are intriguing. Rory at eight or uh, plus 800 is, I don't know. That feels like too short. I mean, that's like a, that's like a pre-tournament number. Yeah. Now he's five back and has what a dozen guys between him and the top of the book. Like that's, that's, that's not as enticing as I, I just want to before the tournament, if I wanted that number five back of a major winner, Oof. uh, KP, anything else? Do we have time to do it? Should, do we even have to do the Sergio thing? I don't know. We should do it for like two minutes. Sergio Garcia, uh, was not happy with a, when his clock started, when he was looking for his golf ball, he was then, uh, basically, I don't want to say caught on the hot mic. It's not like he was trying to hide it, uh, caught on the, on the PGA tour live microphone saying things like I can't wait to leave this tour just a couple more weeks until I don't have to deal with you anymore. Um, there's uh, the Friday tweeted out the video. If you want to go, if you want to go watch it, but, uh, there, there was a headline that's like Sergio hints that he's going to play in the Saudi tour. Oh, you think 
You think the hint? What 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 gave it away here? Well, I think that like Brendan Porras said this on Twitter, but <laughs> it and I get it in the short term. Like you you want to get paid, there's a ton of money available, whatever. But you're going from a league. Yeah, we've got this up on YouTube. If you're are you playing this, Jacob? I don't know if we can do audio through it. Maybe we can. I have no idea. No audio. Okay. Well, he's maybe I'll Rick and I can narrate it, but uh, you're playing on this tour that you are in charge of, right? Like the players, what do we hear all the time? Players run the league. It's a player run organization, all this stuff. And you're leaving that. I get that you're upset about the rules official, but welcome to professional sports. Uh, you're leaving that to go to a group of, like, like what's going to happen in in the like? Is there not going to be rules officials in the right. uh, are, are they are they going to have unlimited time to search for golf balls over there? <laughs> yeah, and and like, I think that guys are all, in the short term like, oh, well, they're gonna they're gonna treat me like the way I what I deserve, and you're like, well, let me know how that works out in the long term, uh, because that historically has not gone well for a lot of people, you know. And I just, I don't know it. It's like, well, just leave then. Fine. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like, go, go do it. Now, I will care if we've got like two leagues that are split in half and we got to cover both of them. That'll be frustrating. The, the guys that we knew have been, that we said were going nine months ago are still the guys that are going, right? It's all the older Euro guys. And I have not heard one name that I'm like, ah, that stinks. There's not been one. No. Who, who would make you say that? Mm. like what and if xander it, what if xander went that would suck I, like realistically that would i i would not be thrilled about that just because he's such a good player but like from a personality standpoint i don't i don't know really what care. if abe answer went don't care what if i guess i really don't care if any of them go honestly i know right <laughs> <laughs> i just found that out right now <laughs> i think you know who who my well, I, I haven't done this. I, I I refuse to stand by this if pressed on it. But I think my like bear like my Mendoza line is uh is Morikawa. Oh, that would be tough, man. That would suck. Yeah. I want to cover Morikawa. Yeah. That would suck. Even like Bryson, that would suck because he's so fun to cover. We should we should have a podcast where we go down the top hundred and say whether we whether we care. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would be a short podcast. But I just I, I don't know. There's just so much like self importance and self aggrandizement. That's like fine, just leave. Like I don't. What what do I like? If I think what's going to be interesting is if those guys are not allowed to show up at the majors. But if you're still at the majors, like. I don't care if Sergio play, plays the Byron Nelson. I don't care if Sergio. I don't care if Lee Westwood plays Bay Hill. I also think it's going to be fascinating if, uh, in nineteen months, they want to come back, or one of them wants to come back. Like so, so, so Sergio's going to burn the bridges on the way out, and then be like, "Actually, uh, I would like to be reinstated." Like, <laughs> I, would, I cannot wait for that grovel moment. <laughs> Well, that's where they're that's where they're leaning on Phil as the human shield to like take all all those arrows, right? Where like, okay, Phil, lead us into the Supreme Court or wherever the the case ends up, because that I mean, seriously, like that's that's Phil's like role in all this, and he, that's probably the role that he wants, honestly, is to is to be the the litmus test for litigation in a some court of high appeal. Yeah, he is carrying. He is run in defense for a lot of these guys right yeah now, it all cut them in on a on a percent um all right kp i gotta run i gotta go do hq we'll do um we'll do round by round recaps after each and every round this week uh but for now let me give a big thanks to producer jacob does all the hard work behind the scenes that right there kyle porter you can find him on twitter at kyle porter cbs and you can find me at rick run good this has been the first cut and we'll catch you next time 